I want to wish everyone a happy and wonderful Sabbath morning on um, this July 24th, 2021. And I'd want to welcome everybody. Good morning, uh, Sister Lucy and Vicky and all of you. Um, happy Sabbath. Let's have a quick word of prayer since I had a little issue getting online, but we're on. So I praise God for that. Father God, we thank you and praise you for allowing us to be here with you this morning, Father. We ask that you cover us and bless us and watch over us. Keep us connected to you. And to you may be the glory, the honor, and the praise, Lord. Forgive us of all our sins and help us to trust you, Lord, no matter what. Be with everyone watching. Watch over them. Bless them, Lord. May your Holy Spirit be here with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Um, I hope uh, you know you are having a wonderful uh, morning. And, um, you know, I just wish everyone uh, a blessed Sabbath. All right, let's just dig in because we have um, little time. We have about 30 minutes. So we're going to, uh, you know, try to get through this. But this is a really exciting lesson. And, um, and I hope you take the time to, to study it and really take a look at it because it's really exciting. Um, le we are in lesson four and it is the cost of rest. And it, um, the memory verse is from Psalm 5110, and it is, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really, um, you know, interesting how now with so much noise going on around us and, you know, I mean, everywhere you go, there's internet, there's, you know, something um going on that some people um uh, pay to to get some uh noise free rooms you know whether you are at the airport or uh you know wherever you are you know it's it's um you know people are doing that but um you know the rest has a cost right when these people are paying to you know at the airport it's very noisy you want to take a nap or you want to have a conversation with no noise in there you know there are rooms that you can now rent to um you know to go through that but it says we realize our inability to bring true rest to our hearts because everybody's looking for rest but we cannot really get that right it says in the fourth century augustine put it succinct, succinctly in his famous confessions book one as he considered god's grace right you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they can find rest in you so we know that real rest really comes from the lord good morning vanessa um you know so it's um you know it's really um interesting on sunday's lesson you know this uh this week the lesson study is gonna dig in and to the story of David, which is a very interesting story, which is a story that I love. And it has so many lessons in it. And I want us to go through this and see what can we learn from that. The first one is worn and weary, right? Um, it says on a balmy spring evening, right? Restless King David pays the roof of his palace. He should have been with his army, right? On the other side of the Jordan, he should have been leading God's people to defeat the Ammonites and finally bring peace to the kingdom. But he felt tired and he felt weary. So he was taking a break and he allowed, you know, his soldiers to go, but he stayed behind. And so we found the story in Samuel 11 verse, verse 1 to 5. Okay, um, as David pays, what did he see below in his balcony? He it was a very beautiful woman taking a bath on her roof. Okay, his sinful impulses got the better of him that evening, and he slept with Bathsheba, the wife of a trusted army officer. So let's dissect this a little bit. This woman is taking a bath. David is tired. And so, you know, he's, he's walking, he's pacing, you know, um, and he's, you know, in his palace balcony and he sees this woman and then lust takes over. One of the thing guys, as we go through, right, is a little too close. Okay. Is that better? Okay. 
Let me know if that's better. Um, you know, for the mic. <coughs> Excuse me. As David, you know, sees this woman, he is he is resting because he's tired. But a lot of times what happens when we get tired, we also rest from God. We forget that we need to go rest in God. So when we are resting, we need to spend more time with the Lord. We, you know, we need to, for him to strengthen us. But instead, most of the time, what do we do? When we are tired, you know, we rest from everything. We rest from God. We rest from, um, you know, from everything. And this is exactly what David did. And what happens? The human nature comes into place right the human nature comes into place and what happens we fall into temptation a lot of times and that's exactly what happened to king david <coughs> excuse me um uh and so we see that um you know he's he's what happens the wife of the officer gets pregnant and we find that story, right, in 2 Samuel 11, verse 6 to 27. So, um, you know, the king stepped out of his relationship with Christ. And no matter what happens, guys, and this is, I want you guys to understand this, that, um, excuse me, Hadasha, can I have some water, please? Thank you. Um, you know, no matter what, we will face consequences. And this is what is about to happen. So, you know, like, we, that's why, guys, I say all the time, it's better to tell the truth, um, even if it hurts, even if there's pain, um, you know, at least you stop it right there. Instead, when you lie, you have to keep covering it with a lie, with a lie, with a lie, and then it can turn deadly like it did for David. <clears throat> so, um, thank you. So King David asked Joab to send Uriah back home because now Bathsheba is pregnant. And, you know, during the, that time, whoa, you know, that cannot happen. Um, and so, you know, Uriah comes. And, um, you know, the Hittite, but he is a man of integrity. And let me tell you, when God is dealing with you and me, there's some things that will just, God will deal with it. And, uh, you know, like some, and l let me tell you this, a lot of people get away with a lot of things. Do you agree with me? Yes, they do bad things, they, you know, and they come back and, you know, and they're doing well. But there's some people, okay, like me, or maybe you, Whenever you do anything wrong, you get caught. Or if you do a little lie or whatever you do, you get, you get caught. Why? Because God is pruning you. You are, you are chosen. So there's some things that you just cannot do. Others can, but you cannot do it. And so this was one of them. David was God's anointed. God had taken him from, from sheep and brought him to, to, and gave him a kingdom. And so he had responsibilities. He had accountability towards God and, and he was fooling around. And so, you know, the Uriah comes in and David is, um, you know, telling him, okay, you're in leave, go sleep with your wife. And guess what? He says he's not going anywhere. How can he go sleep with his wife and enjoy, right? And we find that in 2 Samuel. Okay, how can he go enjoy uh, when, you know, his, co you know, his so f fellow soldiers are on the battlefield? And so Uriah doesn't go to his wife. He sleeps on the footsteps of, at the palace. And so now David is getting desperate. So what does he do? Again, he has to try to cover a lie with a lie. He was looking for rest, okay? And instead of taking that rest in Christ and God, he, he went on his own, you know, um, finding his pleasure. And he, now there's issues. And so what does he do? He orders um, an assassination. 
That's what he did. He ordered an assassination. And you know, the sad thing is Uriah, being such a faithful servant, carried the note that, um, you know, and he didn't locate it, that would execute him, that will kill him. And so, you know, it's, it's, um, and again, it says, the note says, eventually a desperate David reverted to remote control assassination to cover his sin. Wow, guys, this is such a lesson for you and me. You know, again, you know, we need to ask God to help us find rest in him. And when we are caught in something, instead of lying, instead of, you know, we need to be able to stand up and say, you know what? I have sinned, God. Help me. We know we will see it later, but we'll see. It says it is hard to believe that David, to whom God had given so much, could have stooped so low, right? No matter who we are, what warning should we all take from this story? We all, and this is, this is a warning to me. This is a warning to you. No matter how close you are to God, you cannot get away from God. This is just like, um, you know, the, remember the cell phone, you are plugged in and you, you need to be charged. You need to stay plugged in with the Lord because just think about, you know, have you ever had one of those cell phones that can no longer keep charge? So you have for you to speak on it, you have to keep it plugged in all the time. That's what, this is what I figured out for my life. I need to remain plugged in with God because guess what? If you and I don't remain plugged in, we are going to fall. We are going to fall into temptation. And this is exactly, so it's like, oh, I have a relationship with God. You know, I am holy. I am a, a godly woman. I am a godly man. And then, you know, so it's like, you know, you have enough charge supposedly to carry you through. And you find out that your battery is dead. And this is when you and I get in trouble. So this is definitely a lesson for you and I that, you know, no one is above the law. No one is so close to God that you cannot fall into temptation. The only way, I can only do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You can only do all things through Christ who gives you strength. The minute that you and I get away from God, we're, we're, we're doomed. We're in trouble, okay? We are in trouble. And so, wake up call. In the midst of one of the darkest, okay, times of David's life, there was good news. God sent his prophet. Now, in 2 Samuel 12, verse 1 to 14, Nathan the prophet comes to speak to, um, to David. What I love about the way Nathan speaks to David, and this is a lesson for you and me parents, for, for us adults or a friend, whoever you are. When we are speaking to somebody, you don't go and speak down on them or because they've fallen short um, you know, maybe they've done something that they shouldn't have. And then we come through like, you know, we are mighty warriors of the Lord. We're coming to defend God's cause and, you know, putting them down like, oh, look at what you've done. Don't you see you messed up, David? Don't you see what you did? You killed a man. You did this. You did that. You know what? It through the example of Nathan, we can see how we should speak speak to you know to others that have fallen short of the glory of God because what does the Bible say you and I we have all sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God so who am I to point at you I can pray for you you can pray for me because somehow some you know we we're gonna fall but you know what it's knowing that God is able and that God is with us. And I want to say and amen and shouting hallelujah. Now, wake up call. It says, um, you know, so Nathan um, came in and spoke to David and said, um, you know, and because, and he related a story be, that David could understand. David was a shepherd. So when Nathan was speaking to him, he talked to him in a way that David could relate um, you know, too. And he talked to him about, you know, this man having, you know, lots of sheep and things like that. And, and, you know, and, um, cattle and all of that. And this man had one little one, you know, and that's all, you know, it, you know, that's all he had. And then this, the man that had a lot came and took his, 
And what did they, David started getting angry and says, this man deserves to die. How could he do something like that? And Nathan gently says, David, I am talking about you. What you did to Uriah this and Bathsheba, that's what you did. He only had one little wife and you took his wife and used her, practically raped her because, um, you know, she had no choice. The king sends for you and to his chambers. He does whatever he wants with you. And so, you know, today it's, it's not the same thing, quote unquote, but in some places it is. So, you know, we need to think about that. And guess what? David says, this man should die. And what does Nathan answer? You know what, David? You will not die, but you will pay the consequences. Whew, wow. And so, um, you know, David all of a sudden says, realize that he had not sent against Beersheba. He had not sent against Uriah, but he had sent against God, hallelujah. He had sinned against his God and he realized his sin. Okay, and and um and this is why David writes Psalm 51 that you know is one of the my, one of my favorite psalms because you know as many occasions as I get I say it, okay? Um create in me a clean heart, O Lord, because you know it's like we all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God and I want you to understand that, okay? And um so David recognizes he sinned against God. And it says, which makes our hearts restless. David recognized that sin, which makes our hearts restless, is primarily an affront against God, the creator and redeemer. We hurt ourselves. We affect others, right? We bring disgrace to our families or churches. Yet, ultimately, we hurt God and drive another nail into the rough beam pointing heavenward on Golgotha. So when we sin, yes, we bring disgrace to ourselves. We bring disgrace to, to our families. We bring disgrace to, you know, our community. But ultimately, we really hurt God. And it says, all wrong done to others reaches back from the injured one right to God and it says David had committed a grievous sin towards both Uriah and Bathsheba and he keenly felt this but infinitely greater was his sin against God wow but this is, um, you know, like, you know, as we go through the story, it's, it's really amazing that, you know, here's this man of God. Here is this anointed of God. Here is a favorite of God, you know, has, he, he broke several commandments. He broke, um, you know, um, that shall not covet. He broke, um, you know, that shall not commit adultery. He broke, um, thou shall not, you know, steal. He stole his, his, um, his, uh, you know, uh, soldier's wife. Thou shall not lie. Okay. He broke that. And, um, you know, it, I mean, he just broke so many of, um, uh, you know, of the commandments all at once, this anointed one of God. So what does that tell you guys? I want you guys to understand how fragile you and I are as humans and our strength, my strength comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And any, at any moment that we fall, um, that we do not stay plugged in to God, we are, you know, so, you know, we, we bad mouth David. Oh, look at this. Look at, guess what? You will do worse if you were in the place. I would probably do worse if I was in his place because when God's presence is not with you and me, we don't know how we are going to react. And so, um, you know, on Tuesday's lesson, forgiven and, um, and forgotten, it says immediately, um, David realizes that he should really die because like he said, this man deserves death. But um, the prophet Nathan um, tells him immediately, Nathan assured him that the Lord 
also has put away your sin. Oh my God. What kind of God do I serve? How mighty, how wonderful. This is why I love my God. You know, I mean, David just sinned. I mean, bad. He just, um, you know, committed uh, all, all, you know, he just broke a whole slew of the commandments and God tells him, you know what? I have forgiven you. Hallelujah. And, but guess what? And, and that he was forgiven. God will not kill you and he has forgiven you. That's in 2 Samuel 12 verse 13, right? And then it says, Nathan who already had predicted the consequences of David's sin. What are some of the sin? What are some of the consequences? God says it's going to happen. You are going to have calamity that's going to come in your home, right? And does the calamity come? Yes. His own son rapes his own daughter. Um, you know, there's murder in his house. His son kills another son. And um, what else did, did God say? The consequences, you know, um, you are um, uh, someone who's very close to you is going to come and sleep with your wives. Does this prophecy happen? Yes. Absalom, his son, comes in and sleeps with some of his wives. So guess what, guys? What I want you guys to understand, it's not, okay, I'm going to go sin. I'm going to go smoke drugs. I'm going to go drink I'm go and drive, and I'm, nothing's going to happen to me. God is going to protect me. Guess what, guys? You go s drink and drive, and, you know, you might be protected for a while, but you keep it up. Guess what? You might um, get into a car accident of, drunk, of drinking and driving, and then you kill someone else. And spend the rest of your life in jail. So, guys, you know, it's this is not a license to go sin. On the contrary, God, David sinned, God forgot his sin and forgave him, but David had to go through the consequences. And we can see that David had a rough life, guys, because all these consequences that he had to pay based on his sin with Beersheba. Though God is with you, though God is with me, but we are going to pay the consequences. But what I love about my God is he says, I will be with you. Amen. Um, and, and 2 Samuel 12 verse 10 to 23, we see, and these are like I just said some of them. It says, the sword will never depart from your house. house. Okay, um, calamity will happen in your house. Did it happen? Yes. I will take your wives and give to someone close to you. This is where we find all of that. And it really does happen. And guess what? David, what does he do? He stops eating. He, he goes before God and asks him for forgiveness. Because God says this baby is not going to survive. So David goes before God and he fasts and he prays. And he says, God, please forgive me. I need, I need you to save this baby. But guess what? God, so instead of David running away from God, he came to God asking God to, you know, to come and, and be with him. And this is the example that you and I need to follow. Um, you know, that he does come. Um, you know, to the Lord. And guess what? Um, when, when the baby dies after seven days, right? Um, the, his servants were afraid to talk to him like, well, I'm not sure what, you know, how he's going to react. And guess what? As soon as they told David, David shook himself and said, okay, the will of God happened. He, he, he asked for food and he did what he had to do. He was like, okay, but God, you know, I want you to stay with me. And he says, you know, and, and this is where we, we read in Psalm 51, verse 1 to 6, okay? David went public as he opened his heart and confessed his sins. Okay, he didn't hide it. David's cry for mercy appealed to God's unfailing love and his great compassion. He yearned for renewal. And he says, we are sinners and need a savior. We need to recognize our sins and cry out to the only one who can wash us. Hallelujah. Cleanse us and renew us. And we do this. If we do that, when we do this, we can take courage, right? Here is an adulterer, a manipulator, 
a murderer, okay, and someone who violated at least five of the Ten Commandments, wow, and one shot, guys, five commandments, right, who called for help, hallelujah, God is waiting for you and me to call for his help and claim the promise of God's forgiveness, Wow, guys, how far can you go? I mean, it doesn't really matter what you have done in your life. God is ready to deliver. God is ready to forgive. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing. Young people, you know, no matter how far you've gone, maybe you've turned into a drug addict or you're an adult and maybe whatever you've done in your life, maybe you've even killed someone. It really doesn't matter where you are and what you've done in your life. God is is right there waiting with open arms saying come to me I am the one who can forgive I you know um, the law can condemn you but I will forgive you and I will give you freedom I will give you peace I will give you rest and you know so this guilty conscience that is constantly gnawing at you maybe you've done something that is so terrible it's eating at you and you feel guilty maybe it's against your parents maybe it's against your brother maybe it's against your sister I don't know what you've done but it's like you feel so bad and you feel so guilty or maybe you've gone through something in your childhood and you know that you nobody knows except you today I'm, I'm telling you God is willing to free you from this guilt and give you rest in his arms <clears throat> just like he did for um you know for David you know I mean if he can do that for David what about you and me he is willing he is the same God the God that was there yesterday is the same today and the same forevermore so he is willing and able to forgive and forget and and restore you and me and we see that and and um you know and um and and the story of david you know as we go on and we you know on wednesday is lesson something new okay um david also went um on to ask for joy and in psalm 51 verse 7 to 12 it 51 is a beautiful psalm i hope that you if you've never read it that you go read it okay um so if you are living a, a life of adultery or a life of idolatry whatever you're into god is calling you out of it and saying come i want to give you peace i want to give you my rest that's what he he wants and um i mean guys there is nothing like um you know resting in god's presence and it says um you know david also went to ask for joy and gladness okay in the face of the enormity of his sin wasn't this a little audacious you know asking for joy uh, no not at all it says perhaps it may be helpful to listen to this paraphrase to this paraphrase um you know of this verse it says um tell me i am forgiven so that i may enter the sanctuary again where i can hear the joy and gladness of those worshiping you you know i mean th there is peace in the sanctuary of god whether it's a personal sanctuary you know um you know where you and i you know we we are connecting with god you know what i started walking again and i'm so excited about that because i couldn't find enough time between my devotional time and and uh, you know for me to exercise because my favorite exercise is walking so guess what guys I um, I know I'm a little late but you know what it's better late than never so what do I do now when I go on my walk I have my Bible app reading you know my favorite scripture to me what I usually read and for my devotion you know like um, Matthew 27 and um, you know Exodus 20 the Ten Commandments and Exodus 14 I, you know I have that read you know um, reading for so as I'm walking I'm also listening so my walks are prayer walks and I get so excited because I you know I I am able to reconciliate you know um, exercise and spending time with God so it's the same thing can you imagine you're in the gym instead of listening to all these other musics guess what connect with God get, get
get connected with maybe some inspiring um, music or maybe, you know, listening to the Bible, um, you know, read to you, you know, through the Bible um, app, you know, whatever it is, or your favorite book of the, you know, and, um, and the spirit of prophecy, whatever you need. But, you know, find the time, guys, to connect and rest in God. And so, um, you know, one of the verses that I want to read to you and I want to pinpoint to you from Wednesdays is Psalm 51, verse 11 and 12. And this is so important for me and for you. It says, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. This is my prayer. This is my personal prayer, guys, on a moment by moment basis. I don't want God's presence to depart from me. I don't. And and so it, this is why it's spending that personal time with God. It's so important. And, uh, you know, I don't want to get emotional here, but it's, you know, I, this is the worst thing. If for God to depart his presence from me, I don't want to ever feel that way. And this is why I constantly ask God, walk with me, you know, wherever I am in the car. I don't even listen to the radio anymore. It's like, you know, I want to remain connected to my God at all times. Um, you know, and that's his time that he spends as I drive, either I speak on the phone or, you know, or, or I'm listening, um, you know, to him speak to me. And, um, and so it's real. it's really exciting. So, and we see that in Genesis, right? Um, Adam and Eve, after they, they sinned, they ran away from the presence of God, but David has sinned himself and he asked God do not take your presence from me you know because you know as we sin we will pay the consequences but if God's presence remains with us right and if his Holy Spirit is with us we can go through whatever I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I want you to remember that. This is my thing. As I go through, you know, we all have sin. And so there's some consequences I'm paying because of my sin. But you know what? God's presence is with me. And, you know, and he, I know he has forgiven me. I know he has taken th that away from me, you know, and he has brought that sin to the bottom of the ocean and he doesn't remember it anymore. But as, you know, his presence, presence I ask for him to remain with me and do not take me you know do not take that presence from me Lord I this is something that I beg for and I hope you do the same because once God's presence is with us there is nothing that we cannot go through amen and so that's exactly what uh, you know what David realized without the Holy Spirit he is powerless there's nothing that we can do we're gonna fall and fall again you know all of us who think that we are so strong that you know i don't care if you are a minister i don't care um if you are you know the first elder i don't care if you are whoever you are and you think you are so strong in christ beware none of us we are all powerless without the power of god's holy spirit and so this is the only way that we can battle against sin that we can battle against all these evil forces that come that we you know that we might not fall into temptation we need to watch and pray that we might not fall into temptation and this is why God was telling his disciple this is what you guys need to do because no matter no matter how strong you think you are within a a hair of a second you and I can fall look at Peter what the same paragraph Lord the same the same um, verse practically okay now God is Jesus is telling him yes you are you know you, look, look at you 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 the Holy Spirit is with you and the next sentence get thee behind me Satan because guess what once we start feeling that we are somebody and that you know I am a princess of God you know and I am this and I am that guess what this is the formula for downfall. And, um, you know, yes, I am a princess of God, but I can only be and remain a princess of God if I remain in God's presence through the power of his Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? So it's not just, oh, I'm a princess of God. And look at me. I am this. I am that. I am sorry for you. 
and if it's me that's like that, I'm sorry for myself because guess what? I, I will, you know, and I used to think, you know, and th this is why sometimes God has to humble us. I used to think that I was invincible, that, you know, I, as a young woman, you know, here, you know, I, not me, not this. Right now, I know I am powerless without the presence and without the Holy Spirit of the Lord because God has taught me, shut your mouth, Junon. You can't do nothing. You're not strong. You're not this. You're not that. Only through me can you be strong. Only through me. And if you remember, um, if you don't remember anything else about this lesson, I want you to remember that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And without God's presence and the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are powerless. We will fall into temptation. Whether you are a minister, a minister's wife, you are, you are the, 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 the chief, the uh, president of whatever organization, whoever you think you are, you are nothing without God's Holy Spirit in your life. I am nothing without God's Holy Spirit in my life. And I know that for a fact. And this is why I ask God on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, please keep me plugged in. I need to remain plugged in. And then, um, you know, to, to finish, what does David promise, right? And in Psalm 51, verse 13 to 19, he says, I will teach transgressors your ways. Guys, I can only tell you how great and wonderful God is because I've been there. I've gone through it. Um, you know, I am 54 years old and I, I've gone through a whole lot in my life. I've gone through stuff in my life that people like two, three lifetimes will never go through because I've been on a training with God. And, and God has, you know, um, you know, if I used to think I am Ooh, and I am that. Guess what? Right now, I am nothing without the presence of God in my life, right? I can only be here. I can only speak through you, be to you, and with you. I can only teach, you know, this um, and, and share the Sabbath school lesson with you because of God's presence. Because guess what? If we don't have God's presence of, in our lives, we sound like uh, a symbol without no sound. Can you imagine? You're playing a symbol, but there is no sound coming through it, or the sound that is coming through it becomes annoying. Why? Because we don't have God's presence in our lives. So guess what, guys? It's constantly asking God for it. It's praying and fasting and asking God, you know, give me a clean heart, oh Lord. You know, clean me, Father. I need to be sanctified. I need your presence in my life. You need God's presence in your life. And you know what? If you don't know how to do it, just ask and he will show you the way. And, um, you know, as I leave you, um, you know, um, and I definitely want to read this verse as I, as I, as I leave for you. Okay. Um, first John one verse nine. Okay. And it says, um, you know, or be, just before that, I want to read um, Psalm 51, 14. It says, if we claim to be without sin, we, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So whoever thinks that they have not sinned or they are above, you know, I am so holy. I am so connected to God that I haven't sinned. You are a Pharisee. You are a liar because all of us have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. The only person who has not sinned was Jesus when he was here on earth. He lived among us as a human, but, you know, he did not sin. Everybody else has fallen short and sinned. And so, you know, this is why we need Jesus. We need Christ in our lives. And it says in 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, hallelujah, he is faithful and just, right? And will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. If we confess our sins, right, he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all all unrighteousness you and i can take that to the bank this morning hallelujah guys all i can say is um 
you know, you know what does God want? A, um, you know, like David says, um, a broken and a contrite heart. Okay, these or God you will not despise, because God doesn't like people who are full of pride, who think they're all that and a bag of chips. Okay, you and I are sinners in need of Christ's presence in our lives. And who am I to judge you and saying, oh, look at Junan and her hat. She's not a child of God. Look at her and her hair. She is not a child of God. Who are you to tell me who I am? Who am I to say who you are? We all have to come naked before God and God will be the judge of whether you and I are in his presence. So if you don't know something, shut your mouth, okay? Mm -mm. Shut your mouth because you don't know what you are talking about. Let God be the judge. And you, you pray. And me, I pray. This is what God has given us to do. If you see a child is going wrong, you and I need to bow on our knees and pray for that child instead of like, oh, look at this, look at this child, you know, look, look at my children. I have done such a good job with my children. P parent, you better shut your mouth because guess what? You, uh, you, you better pray. When you see your children are coming out good, you better pray, okay, for them. And, and don't bad mouth other people parents children because you don't know what yours are really into to you they might be perfect little children and behind the scenes there are a bunch of wretched kids that are taking others down so you and i better pray when you we better pray not only for ourselves not only for our children but for our neighbors children for our church members children don't bad mouth other people's kids because we don't know what ours will turn out tomorrow or and 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 i'm serious about that i'm very serious no we don't know even as adults, you know, we need to pray for our children. We need to pray for one another. When I see something going on in somebody's life, I need to come and say, God, you know, um, instead of bad mouthing, uh, you know, go and pray and ask God if he wants me to speak to that person. Lord, give me your presence. Give me your Holy Spirit that I can speak like Nathan spoke to David and David understood and David repented just like he wants you and I to repent. So, guys, it's been such a pleasure having you. And um, I hope that you learned something and I hope that you take this and teach it to others may god be with you i don't know um if there are any um comments or questions but um you know uh, we're running out of time it's time uh you know for church and i will see you at the two o'clock prayer this afternoon may god be with you i love you guys and god loves you even more father god here we are before you naked before you lord because we need, we stand in, your, in, in front of you in your presence, Lord, asking you to shine upon us, Lord, and that you can, um, you know, forgive us of our sins, Lord. And please, Lord, give us your Holy Spirit, Father, that can, um, you know, help us recognize our sinful natures, Lord, that we can cleanse, that you can cleanse us of all unrighteousness because we have all fallen short of your glory. The young people watching, the adults watching, Lord, help us to remain connected to you that we might not fall into temptation, Lord, and sin. We thank you and praise you. Be with everyone watching. Bless them. Watch over them. Keep them connected to you. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Have a wonderful Sabbath. I love you. And, uh, you know, pray for me And I, as I'm praying for all of you. And I'll see you next Sabbath. Bye-bye.